Awaken dark magic and heed what I say. I command you, show me Halloween on today. Oh, how that day was a prize and delight. Give me more vision, oh power of night. What tricks, what treats, what scares I now see. And costumes, spells show me, what will they be? Monsters and goblins, come out and play. I summon you now to Halloween on today. everyone we have a very special guest today from Los Angeles her name is Teja Valencia she's a voice actor she's in Vancouver this weekend it is January 12th and 13th because uh, by the time you watch this it will already, already have happened um, she's in here uh, in Vancouver to teach a two-day uh, intensive voiceover workshop but uh, she is definitely uh, an expert in the field and so thank you for uh, welcome Teja, you know welcome to, welcome to vancouver i'm delighted um please uh, for the people that don't know that are watching that don't know who you are what you do can you maybe give us a, a little background uh, short synopsis exactly no um i actually am from new york city um i'm a born and raised actress but my parents were actors uh, they didn't take it uh into their adulthood, uh, but they started as actors, and uh, my father became a restaurateur, and my mother was a singer, and I kind of had that bug. I just knew mm -hmm. that it, that's what I was going to do, and um, I was lucky enough, because of my mom's background, to be doing extra work with her in New York City, and I didn't have a lot of formal training. My father was kind of my, my acting teacher, and uh, just right timing, right place, I ended up auditioning at 15 years old for a uh, Louis Malle film, who was a great uh, French director. Uh, mm -hmm. I got cast um, out of backstage newspaper, and I became a uh, professional actress overnight. I kind of, I didn't show up for a play. Uh, the next day I went, I auditioned, and, and I was flown out to Los Angeles, and wow. I started, yeah, it was one of those So schwab. 15, so 15, 15 first I, crack at it, you hit a home run. I, it was one Basically. of those right place, right times. Yeah. I, they, they wrote the wrong age. They were looking for a, a Latina ingenue, and my mom mm -hmm. was going for the open call, and I said, well, take my picture. You never know. There might be some extra work, and she said, they, they wrote the wrong age. Come down, audition, and they said, you know, you're wonderful. We're going to fly you out to Los Angeles. Uh, either you'll be back the next day or you'll fly out and film for six weeks. And mm -hmm. so um, I got lucky and it seemed like they enjoyed my performance and I got to work with incredibly brilliant actors like Sean Penn and Donald Sutherland and Jack wow. Warden and Christine Baranski. So I was kind of... So you got the bug pretty much off that first... Yeah, I mean, I was already doing... Yeah. I was already the lead. I, I, You know, in the camp plays, I was Maria in West Side Story and Sandy oh. and Bruce. So no, I was, <laughs> I was, I was already yeah. there. Yeah, I just okay. was like... This was the opportunity to oh, actually exactly. do it. Okay. So after that, um, not long after that, I got to, to be in All My Children, and that was three years, and I was lucky enough to get you know on-the-job training, uh, and I was nominated for an Emmy at that time um, because I was really good at crying, and my character was a, kind of a sad uh, sack of a... <laughs> well, I, I grew up watching All My Children because my, oh, gra my grandmother would babysit me. That's right. And she that's... loved, that was her fav favorite soap. General Hospital and All My Children. Oh my gosh. Two, well, sure. Did yeah. you watch it when Tad, oh, Tad Martin... 100% and... I did. Oh, so I was his first <laughs> wife. I don't know <laughs> if you knew that. <laughs> I didn't, but I do now, and I, but I definitely I, I was seen Dottie you. on All My Children. Oh, <laughs> that name definitely... <laughs> Oh my that, gosh, that's like funny. That, so I did I that. I that, did that for three years, and that was yeah. a really popular time. That was during the Luke and Laura time. Yeah. So that was really fun. So, um, and then I actually got written out. You know, that's the thing about soap operas that a lot of people don't know. You sign off for two years, and then mm -hmm. they can write you out every 13 weeks, because that's just the way storylines go. Cycle, I guess. They signed yeah. me up for two years. I was like, cushy, cushy, cushy. And then uh, 13 weeks later, I was like, nah, we're kind of done with you. And so, I got to um, decide I'm going to go out to LA, LA and try my hand at uh, acting out there, and I did that for a period of um, oh, 15 years, and then there was my mother again who came out to visit and stayed, saying, you know, you should do voiceovers, and mm -hmm. so I thought this was way back in the 90s, and I said, oh, you know, it's a niche market, and mm -hmm. it's really hard to get in, and she's like, you should do it, and so 
like being a great mother, she pestered me enough, and I started doing, uh, I got an agent, and I started doing it very little, and found that I actually really loved doing voiceovers, uh, because it was, it was liberating uh, mm -hmm. to not be confined to this, you know, to yeah. be, when you're acting on camera, and even, you know, theater, you, they really want you to be the role. They want you to walk in being the role. And then the, the beauty of voiceovers is that you get to create whatever it is with this beautiful instrument. Yeah. And so over a six year period, I started doing more and more voiceovers. And I always joke that my therapist mentioned at one point, you know, your mental health seems to be going up in proportion to the amount of voiceovers you're doing. And I thought, you know what? You're right. And I love this. And so. Mm -hmm. I ended up getting an opportunity to be on another soap, mm -hmm. and it was a 12-week stint. And I thought, well, maybe I could do voiceovers and soap operas, you know, like just those two things. And mm -hmm. I realized it was like my the universe was telling me no. I, I I was trapped on a set, and I was saying the same line with one new word, like soap operas are. And I was, nope, I'm done. And it kind of bookended my career over, that I'd been doing for 15 years. And then I decided I'm going to just focus on voiceover, mm -hmm. and that's been another 15 or 20 years, and I've. Never looked back, so I just dominate it. <laughs> I I Focus really and it. was incredibly passionate about it and yeah. applied a lot of my acting skills and became um, well versed in all the mediums. Which is that the other thing about voiceover is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. There's promo and narration and animation, which is my you know my nearest to my heart because of course it comes from the acting background. But you know now I get to play. Um, uh, cops that are, you know, amoebas, and mm -hmm. I got to play, you know, Vulcan. I mean, you know, things that were uh, limited me uh, on camera, the sky's the limit. So I became a passionate voiceover actor for the last mm -hmm. 20 years, and then in the last few years, you know, after being in both of those, had the opportunity to start teaching and found and pass a, on the knowledge and yeah and, the, and the excitement and the thrill yeah. of like you know why I love this medium which combines acting with the freedom of the voice and uh, then I was lucky enough to meet an incredibly talented uh, colleague who uh, Brent uh, who then introduced me to you and that's why I'm here and here we are <laughs> in Vancouver. Yeah. And I really appreciate you being here. Uh, what was the first role you booked as a voiceover artist? Oh, that's a good question, and I actually remember it. Mm -hmm. I, because I, you know, at that point, this was a long, long time ago <laughs> when they only had pagers, you know, and it was the drug dealers and us who had pagers, because yeah. there wasn't, you know, you, so it was, um, my agent would signal me, it was like, two, well, you know, call when you can, two, mm -hmm. two, call sooner than later, two, 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 you have a job. And so I got this two, two, two. I was like, "Oh my God, what is that?" I, I have a job, and uh, and it was, um, it was the, uh, it was the video company that no longer exists. What was the, what was it when you get videos? It starts with the. What was the one where you could rent the videos? It's all of a sudden it, Blockbuster. 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 <laughs> it, was yeah, blockbuster. Nice. it was a Blockbuster partner read. I remember I was like, "This is amazing!" But it was the same day. That was mm -hmm. the thing about voiceover. You know, with acting, one of the reasons why. I you know, I kind of liked it too, is because I'm 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 kind of a I'm an Aries, New Yorker, Italian, mm -hmm. uh, you know, very short, quick attention, intense, and acting, you know, requires you to have very good longevity. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to maintain that energy for 12 hours by short stops, short stops. You get to act for a little bit, then you got to wait for the camera. You got to act a little bit, then you got to mm -hmm. turn around, then you got to speak to somebody. And, and voiceover was like intense, liberating, fast, one hour intense, you do it, and that so fits my personality. You, but can only, you can only do three hours at a time, is that, is that right? Or? Well, I mean, the average, the longest generally for voiceover, of course, if you're doing a book, you can go hours, okay. uh, but, but animation sessions are usually no more than four hours. Okay. And, um, but the also thing about the other side of voiceover is that it's very last minute. Mm -hmm. It tends to be the last thing on the list. So that job that I got through my pager was that day. So that was kind of like a, uh, like, really, it's the same day, you know, with acting. Drop acting. everything and just get yeah. there. Yeah, so flexibility mm -hmm. as a voiceover artist is key to being the most successful. So okay. I did that job and then, you know, a few more that year. But it was six, you know, it was, it was like a three year, you know, some bad demos. And at mm -hmm. that point, again, they had tapes and it was, the very few teachers out there, mm -hmm. and, and there wasn't even the internet to find those teachers. It was all word of mouth. So, 
We've come a long way, baby. Well, like, I can't even imagine because like this, we're so lucky today to have these these tools like the internet and and apps and social media and stuff. And it's, it's you can research a role even or research or find so somebody much. so quickly. The resources are amazing, and mm -hmm. it does allow again, you know, the connection through uh, the internet and social media to be able to find people that you are interested in working with and then saying, you know, presenting like you did to have us come out. So it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a great time to be investigating this. On the, on the, up, you know, the downside, of course, it used to be only because it was a niche and it was it, technology restricted who had access to the tools. Mm -hmm. I, you know, that it was a much smaller pool. So on that side, you have the flip side that you're, there's more competition. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's like anything, you have to just set your sights, do your thing and rise to the top. Exactly, so when you started booking, did you go and train or did you just learn on the job? Or oh, were you, were you as always opposed to where I was, training? I was training, yeah. yeah, I, yeah. Because I felt like, um, because there's so many different crafts and mediums that, mm -hmm. you know, it's, well, that was the funny one of those stories too, is that I picked up the phone and someone said, you know, you should be a voiceover artist. I was like, okay, okay, I'm finally gonna do it. And someone said, well, here's the name of an agent. Okay. There's a voiceover artist agent. So I picked up the phone and I called her. I was like, hi, my name is Tasha Valenza and I'm an actress, I'm nominated. You and your phone want. voice. Right, I do remember. <laughs> you did your phone voice. And I said, so um, yeah. would you like to meet with me? And she mm -hmm. said, well, no, but I, I do have a number for you to call. I was like, oh, maybe she's referring me to another agent. And I said, so who are you gonna refer me to? She goes, a teacher. And I said, okay. Okay, so I went to the teacher and, and I did study and then there's a process, you know, I had to train and then make a demo and then the first demo was rejected and then I found an agent through another and she said, I don't really like your demo but I like what you have to offer and let's train some more and make a new demo. So it was definitely a learning mistake, curve, continue to train and I have to say, you know, at this point, I coach and I still like to get coached. Mm -hmm. It's I, I, I don't think you can ever get to the point where you're, you know, I call it know-it-all-itis. I mean, it's wonderful to be doing this this many years later, but there's still something wonderful about having someone in your ear. Like I, I can do my auditions at home, but sometimes I'd love to go to the agency just because I'd love to just have someone saying, you know what, I'd like to hear it a different way. A and fresh ear and a fresh eye just yeah. to like give it even the top Hollywood actors still get coached for a role, Absolutely. I'm sure. Absolutely. I don't think I mean, we can ever stop learning, and I, I yeah. think uh, that every time that I can grow, I, then I can offer more to my students. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, so it's definitely not an overnight... Success? Uh, oh, no. No, it was, yeah. about, it was probably two years from the first time that I said, I want to do voiceover be between all the, you know, the first man that I met, it was from a little ad in Variety, which mm -hmm. is, again, you know, there was no internet at the time, or at least it wasn't up and running, and uh, he, you know, I, I, I jokingly say that he was 80 years old and his copy was 80 years old. <laughs> and so the first, yeah. the first tape I made, it was before CDs, was awful. Um, and so the first, I got many rejections, you know, even just like sending them in all, you know, again to, agencies and then I went to another who I found through word of mouth and then made another tape and then the agent that actually signed me on she overheard me coaching my then boyfriend on an audition that he was getting and she said do you do voiceovers and I said yes as a matter of fact as I do, fact, I do. <laughs> she said could I hear your tape but I had mixed mm -hmm. animation with commercial I mean it was really just an amalgamation of, mm -hmm. of, of some good and not so good but she was able to see thankfully uh, enough of the good that she was willing to take me on. So that was two years, and then I think it was six months before that first blockbuster job, and then I made maybe you know ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars that year, and then the next year I increased it, and then the next year, and then all of a sudden it just you know again putting in more hours, more training, more time, and once they get to know you and trust you, and then you start booking more, and then it just feeds yeah. on itself. Yeah. So saying that, what's a, a really good piece of advice for something starting out in voiceover to get an agent to start to get an agent? Well, again, you know, it's it's that much more competitive mm -hmm. now. Um, the nice thing is, uh, you know, the first thing, of course, is you really have to make a strong demo mm -hmm. or demos because ultimately, um, you know, when you're sending that email, they have to listen to you and they may give you all of 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. And if they don't like what they hear in those 20 seconds, 
their attention span is short, there's a lot of competition. So you really want to make sure that you're in a position that you know that you've had enough feedback that you have wowed them. Mm -hmm. the, uh, on the flip side, you know, there's a lot of ways to market yourself outside of agencies now that, you know, it used to be really strictly through an agency. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you don't have to necessarily only wait to get an agent. But if you definitely want to get an agent, you've got to train, hone, make a killer demo, and know that when that goes out, that you are going to capture their attention. Mm -hmm. In the first 20 seconds, basically. I would say, yeah. And now, I guess you can, there's almost like a freelance world out there with the with social media and and Instagram even like where you can record yourself and like just put out work Absolutely. keep content, putting out content content yeah, exactly. showing yourself even as you're training i mean mm -hmm. i just taught a class and there was a gentleman that uh, had himself filmed and he put it out there and you know he's he's getting mm -hmm. feedback from it so there are opportunities now to present yourself even as you're going and you never know who's going to get in touch with you and say, yeah, I, I really am interested. So you mm -hmm. you can you can get workarounds from exactly. the actual email. You can present yourself, present yourself, present yourself, and then do through social media, through all the Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, show yourself to somebody who actually might say, you know what, I'd like to come to you. So that that is a you never know if you market yourself properly, you never know who's going to see it. Basically, right? absolutely, it's a yeah. it, it's a great time. In, in all areas, right, from YouTubers mm -hmm. and to be able to make your own content. Yeah. You play some pretty iconic animation uh, characters at the moment, or in, even in the past. Where, when did that whole thing start, and who have you played? Uh, so, I, as I mentioned, I love animation mm -hmm. because, of course, it's, it's really the, the closest to being the actor that I came from. Um, and I've been lucky enough to play. I, from way back when, I guess my first iconic role that I didn't realize how iconic was. Like, I got into social media 20 years later, but was this? It was the beginning of video games called. Uh, well, it wasn't the beginning. It was the beginning when they actually had taken that notch up from like the very, um, you know, the, the graphics went up. Right, yeah, exactly. Right. And with the storyline. And so um, it was from Metal Gear Solid. I got okay. to play Sniper Wolf. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, as I said, I mean, we made it and. Then I heard later on, this is a really popular game. I was like, oh, that's cool. And then once I got into social media, uh, it was this wonderful, aware, uh, you know, like uh, welcoming open arms. Uh, as a matter of fact, David Hayter, who plays Snake, is a good friend of mine um, because we were compadres and actors. And mm -hmm. um, when I got into Twitter, he, he kind of like opened the gates and said, look who's on Twitter. Yeah. It's Sniper Wolf. He's like, dude, you got to follow her. And I was like, oh my God, I feel like Cinderella because like my numbers climbed. Nice. <laughs> he yeah. has like 100,000 or, you know, maybe yeah. 200,000 followers or That's more. That's what happens though. And so he, he kind of like did the, you know, welcome to the, to the world. And it was like this wonderful uh, revelation of uh, incredibly wonderful fans. And so um, some other ones would be uh, Poison Ivy. Mm -hmm. I've gotten to play her in um, a different, a lot of different versions from the Arkham series, and then mm -hmm. um, Infinite Justice, and then even a Lego version. So she's a near and dear. And um, and then I I got to play um, in the Clone Wars uh, Shakti, General Shakti, yeah. and she's kind of cool. So I've been really lucky. I play a lot of um, I would say mostly strong female characters, and uh, exactly. I enjoy that. Well, there's a very, um, Vancouver actually hosts a, a pretty good animation industry and video game industry, actually. There's oh. like EA Sports and, I don't know, Sean, who else is here for video games? Talking to me, off camera. Yeah, off camera. <laughs> <laughs> there's no rules of the show. What are you talking about? Uh, there's, uh, there's like 33 video game production companies yeah. here. Oh, wow. Yeah, Studios. exactly. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. Yeah, that certainly animation. wasn't here when I, I, I didn't even mention my, my connection to Vancouver, but I guess I should since this is... This is not your first time in the city, exactly. No, yeah. no, no, no. I actually did in my acting days. Uh, I did my first uh, Vancouver series. It was actually... When they were first starting to film here in the early 90s, I did a series called The Heights. Mm -hmm. And it was during the Melrose Place period that and when Melrose had just started and then mm -hmm. The Heights and it was all Aaron Spelling. Yeah, he and, controlled the Oh yeah, he was a the teenage airwaves it was of those huge. days. Yeah. 
And so I got to live in beautiful Vancouver for six to like seven months, mm -hmm. um, and we made thirteen episodes. And it was, you know, like, it was about a band. It was about a garage band, mm -hmm. and um, I was the girlfriend of the drummer. But you know, you can find them somewhere on the internet. But it was, it was. Uh, I loved living here. I was deeply disappointed well, I when I, they didn't. Uh, they I think didn't. I remember that show actually when yeah. I was in high school. How do you talk to an angel? Oh, of course, <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, it was it like that one song that yeah, everyone yeah. knew, but that was that was it. So, unfortunately, they didn't uh, continue with it, so I didn't get my, I didn't get to stay here. But it was all for the best because I was mm -hmm. supposed to be a voiceover artist. I jokingly uh, call myself a recovering actress and a fully functioning voiceover artist. <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. That should be your Twitter profile. That is my profile. Handle. Is it? Uh, no, but I, I always <laughs> open up. Like, I call yeah. myself a recovering actress and a fully functioning voiceover artist because I feel so lucky to be doing it. Fully functioning. 100%. Uh, what is some, some advice to get into, into a role, into a character? How do you prepare for like, a, a role like Poison Ivy or that kind mm. of thing? Well, I always try to honor the writer, of mm -hmm. course, you know, read as much as I can. And then, of course, um, you know, when it's animation and you're looking at the pictures and finding out some of the backstory, because uh, particularly with these wonderful characters, where they, you know, they've been around for so long, you know, mm -hmm. you really try to delve into, you know, just similar to being an actress. Mm -hmm. And then um, understanding, you know, what is their intention? I mean, that's that's the actor's question that I bring to all of my work and, and bring to my students, you know, and I actually bring to outside, because now I coach even non-actors, I coach, mm -hmm. coach non-actors to think like a voice actor in your okay. own life, so you can play your personal and professional roles more effectively. So you do like, um, you teach coach people to... Lawyers and students. Public speaking, basically. Public speaking, yeah. but even private speaking, okay. because sometimes people are so good, but we've become such a technologically oriented uh, that people don't feel as comfortable. I teach the art of confident verbal communication. Okay. So I ask the same questions. As, as much as it is the actor's question, who am I in the scene of my life? Mm -hmm. Who am I speaking to? Mm -hmm. What do I want? And how does my voice support that intention? Mm -hmm. So I always jokingly say that my husband knows exactly how I feel about him by the way I say his name. <laughs> right? That's great. It's like everyone can relate to that, right? Yeah. We know that if we, you know, when we love somebody, we, I can say, honey, and I can lilt up and he'll, you know, and, and that conversation is going to go a certain way. Or I can say, Harvey, yeah. uh, and that conversation is going to go a certain way. It's an indicator, basically. Right? And yeah. so that's something that I think about, you know, what is the intention? So for Poison Ivy, you know, I, she's a seductress. She is always seducing. Mm -hmm. So her intention, it does, you know, what does she want? She wants power, but she wants to do it through her seductive qualities. That would be very different from another character, you know, who, uh, you know, Shakti, who's a Jedi warrior. Mm -hmm. She wants respect. She has authority. So the voice supports the intention. The voice follows the intention. Mm -hmm. If you know what you want, like, the words that was my father always said, you know, I love you can be a ton of different things. It can mm -hmm. be I love you. It can be I need some money. <laughs> it can be I, I hate your guts. Yeah. You know, it's it's what's behind the words. And that's what I feel like that's what we if we can command that and understand that the words are there, mm -hmm. but it's the intention that make the words come out the way they do. Exactly. That's beautiful. You mentioned that you're coaching, and, and LA, can you talk a little bit more about that in your, in your personal brand? Yes, I would say that my, uh, my personal brand is Giving Great Voice. Mm -hmm. My whole platform is Giving Great Voice because mm -hmm. I love Giving Great Voice. I love teaching Giving Great Voice, and I teach it to my voiceover students, and then I teach it to, I just had a beautiful girl who's 13 come in and learn with me yesterday, and I was teaching her not only to be stronger in the debate team, but to empower her as a 13-year-old in middle school mm -hmm. to deal with, you know, bullying. Okay. So it's such a great joy for me to empower, and I've had the opportunity to um, I have an app. I, I was a co-creator of an affirmation meditation app. Uh, oh, really? Yes, it's called Haven Affirmations. Haven Affirmations. And it's completely free, mm -hmm. and I co-wrote each one, uh, and they're all a 10-minute 
they're all masteries broken up into depression reduction, confidence, mastery, marriage, um, health, and it's literally a 10 minute bath of self kindness. Okay, well, we'll put that in the links down in the description. Yeah. Uh, and what was it called again? It's called Haven Guided Affirmations. Haven Guided Affirmations. So, under the umbrella of giving great voice, it's mm -hmm. how do I give great voice to the world? And I get to do it as a voiceover artist and a mm -hmm. teacher. Um, how do I give great voice back mm -hmm. through the app, which is completely free? Um, I, I, I loan my voice for um, charities that I'm passionate about. I'm, and I love to teach, and then I love to empower others to give great voice. And I'm doing the Giving Great Voice Challenge, which I'm so grateful that you were a part of. Well, it was a pleasure. It, like I said, it was. I'm definitely not a, a phone caller anymore. I, I, I have I get anxiety when I have to like answer or call somebody, which is really weird because I used to like talk on the phone for hours. But like my parents are lucky to get a call sometimes. Right. <laughs> so, well, here you are interviewing yeah. me, and you giving you're you're giving great voice. Mm -hmm. But we have some somehow societally gone so far away from that mm -hmm. that this under the Giving Great Voice Challenge, which is um, using our voices. Basically, the essence of Giving Great Voice is how do we touch another person? Yeah, but now it's, everything's so instant, and right. we, we, we multitask so much that a phone call, oh, it's gonna take 10 minutes or right. a half hour for that phone call, I don't have time for that. So it's taking time for yourself and basically. We've lost our yeah. intimacy mm -hmm. and our humanity. We're, mm -hmm. we're, we're losing so much of that. So. Um, during the holidays especially, when it can be a very lonely time, mm -hmm. um, we decided to do a Giving Great Voice Challenge, which is ongoing, and I highly want to impart to your wonderful guests that mm -hmm. uh, all it requires is to share an experience how you give great voice. And, and um, the simplest is who on your list of three people that you know would love to hear from you? Mm -hmm. And pick up the phone, call that person, share the experience on Instagram or Facebook. Mm -hmm. How did it make you feel? How did it make them feel? And then um, hashtag giving great voice challenge and tag me and I'll repost and it's my exactly. desire. And the whole, the whole part of that is just to motivate somebody else to do it. Yeah. And people might think, well, what's the point of like showing sharing, about, it? sharing about like, was it, it's to like so put inspiring. that, I, it, it inspire somebody else and put it in their head to like, you know what, I'm gonna do it too and then inspire somebody else to do it. The or challenge amazing. somebody else to do That's it. right, yeah. challenge, yeah. it's a challenge. I, I like yeah. to think of it as uh, it's the ice bucket challenge without the ice or the money. It's it's really easy. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's, a, it's a kindness campaign because mm -hmm. we, um, there's been so many on my Instagram shares, I'm inspired by each one. I was inspired by yours. I, I just made a post recently about how I wish I could call my mom, but I can't anymore because mm. she's passed. Um, they've all been amazing. So that's that's my the giving great voice. That's kind of what it's all about, and it's something that I'm. It's my mission. It feels like it's what I was supposed to do is to help people. Uh, as you can tell, I love the giving great voice, and I perhaps maybe even a little too much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I um, not at all. Even a, a little quieter, yeah. like. Ooh, <laughs> Brent's but, always like, um, we look like it'd be like, okay, okay, I'll, I'll stop talking. I'll stop talking. So, <laughs> but I think the arts, that's what it's supposed to do is help people, really. I don't think it should be a propaganda, maybe help propaganda for helping people or maybe help people see the world in a different way. Yes. And instead of trying to push an agenda or stuff like that, but I think acting and stuff is supposed to help. It's good therapy, it's a good escape for people, but it's also supposed to like inspire people. And touch people, yeah. and move them, and, and have them hopefully see some of their own. You know, today I, I did a post about when I have anxiety. Mm-hmm, I've seen that, yeah. Yeah, because I mean, I made Haven um, because I know that I, I help reprogram myself when I say kind things to myself. and. Mm -hmm. When I allow my thoughts to take me on a spiral, as we all do sometimes, I know it's not helpful for me. So mm -hmm. I, 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 made, I teach what I need to learn. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like if I can lift somebody up and we can all continue to lift each other up, then we can make what is a very difficult time in the world a little bit kinder and a little mm -hmm. bit nicer and a little bit gentler. What is the best piece of advice that you have received either for in life or for your career? Okay, I, I can actually answer this one. Mm -hmm. I have two main ones that I fire can them out with fire away. Okay, so um, well, okay. First one is um, comparison is the thief of happiness. Okay. 
And actually, somebody, uh, there was a famous person who said the thief of joy, but I love comparison is the thief of happiness, because you look to the left or the right. And then happiness is being grateful for what you have right now. That's great. Because I was wondering, like, oh, you know, so many of us, myself, when I was asked to define it, I was always, oh, happiness is this. And, and there was a great rabbi who, who said to me, no, happiness is being grateful for mm -hmm. what you have right now. Exactly. So I try to live in an attitude of gratitude, and I try to not look too much to the left or the right. And that's a great answer because it works in life and in, in the film industry because a lot of actors will compare themselves to like somebody else and everyone's at their own level. The, everyone's at their own uh, stage in their, in their career and in their life. Right. So it's hard not to, yeah. especially in the world of social media. That can yeah. be the downside because everyone looks like they're doing great. Mm -hmm. um, and it can be very intimidating and I think it's really a, you know, important to put the blinders on and then 100%. go back to that happiness is being grateful for what you have right now. And not to say that you don't want more. I mean, I love abundance and I, again, you know, I affirm it. But I certainly have found that um, if I'm in a bad space, as soon as I think of five things I'm grateful for, I can make myself feel better. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining us here in Vancouver. I'm definitely looking forward to the workshop in the next couple of days. And uh, I'm delighted. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Uh, all her, like I said before, all her links will be in the description below. And uh, please, I don't know, if you liked it, like, share, subscribe, uh, and leave a comment below. Try to keep it, you know. Kind. Kind and, <laughs> and clean. If not, then okay. Mom. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. Oh, sorry, I want to thank you uh, to Backcountry Brewing in Squamish, BC, and Call of Fitness. Uh, proud sponsors of the show. Thank you. What's your story, Vancouver?